Whoa, Jesus, do my farts really smell like that? Nope. <clears throat> All right, hello. Welcome to finally yet another keyboard video. I know I usually say that this keyboard focuses more on this think engine, but honestly, I'm returning to my roots of posting more gameplay than actual proper content. So my deepest and utmost apologies for that kind of stuff. But now we are back with Keychron and of course, a Q3. Now, the reason why I had been eyeing this for so long is because of the fact that I enjoy the knob and because of its price. $184 completely assembled with decent switches and keycaps and gasket mount. So, of course, I was like, oh my goodness, Ugh. I can't find any other keyboard that I like that's within the range because I really love the look of the Mode 80 and like the uh, Wave 88. But unfortunately, this is way out of my kill zone, basically. That shit is uh, gonna break my wallet in half. But thanks to my brother, for more reasons than one, he saw me just eyeing this thing and he was like, yo man, you do good and I'll basically treat you out multiple times. And treat me out he did, because he got me the Keychron Q3. And not only that, but thanks to him in general for shaping my entire college career. Because without him, I'd probably be out of high school for about five years and not doing anything with my life. So thank you so much. Anyway. Uh, enough of the behind the scenes stuff, all I have to say is that June will be the self-improvement and content creation month and July will definitely be something more busy because I am taking a phlebotomy class and that is not fun. Well, I suppose it will be, but apparently I'm going to be stabbing my classmates and they'll be stabbing me, so my hands are up here. Anyway, enough about that, behind the scenes stuff, whatever, I'm pretty sure you're not here for that. So let's continue on to the background info about the Q3, which is basically the videos that I consumed when it first dropped back in March and of course April. I saw mostly keyboards video, which you can see in the top corner, and the three things I wanted to focus on, sound, ease of modability, and value, because this thing is $184 plus shipping. Now, for a hot swap gasket, fully assembled, decent switched, and f fully aluminum or aluminium keyboard for $184 plus shipping is kind of nuts. Keychron definitely is making some waves here, and I definitely have sung the praises off camera, but I never got them myself because the 75% layout wasn't what I wanted. I didn't like the 65% because I don't use 65%, and I was like, a TK with a knob? Dude, I really want this, but I don't know if I can grab it. Um, so basically, I wanted to focus on those because admittedly, I have used this since my birthday, which was May 29th. And May 29th until now has been a decent amount of time. So I would say that I have a decent grasp on how the keyboard is like. And the keyboard is definitely packed full of features. So you know what? Let's not waste any more time and just get to the unboxing. So first off, you have a lid and you get that fresh box smell mm. and of course it's protected by a pad and I do enjoy this it's just very well presented so of course you get the keyboard itself it's usually wrapped in the bag but I took it out and put it back in so that's what it looks like this you have a very decent cable here which you can actually see at the end here, you can either do USB-C to USB-C or have a USB adapter here. So they thought of everything. You also have extra keycaps for your regular configuration. You have the Alt and the Windows keys. The one on my current model still has the Command and Option keys for Mac users. You have spare screws and gaskets and rubber bump-ons as well, which are quite nice and of course last but not least the keyboard just make sure to open that cards yeah so let's grab this now here is the keychron q3 in carbon black version 2 and the reason why i bought this thing or rather i requested this bot is because of two things one the OSA keycaps, because apparently they're double shot PBT, which is very interesting. And two, the switches inside, which are G Pro Reds or Gatoron G Pro Reds. And I thought to myself, that couldn't possibly be any good, right? And I was wrong. 
but I will get into this at a later date because I want to do a full review of those switches. But needless to say, the switches actually come pre-lube, so there's no spring ping, and you can actually feel that lube in there rather than just a dry, scratchy switch. So already off the bat, we're off to a good impression because this truly was made for a sort of out of the box experience and you could take it apart if you want to go the extra mile and mod it, but it's completely serviceable. I've used this stock since May 29th. That's how confident I am in this keyboard. So needless to say, this was a very good purchase. Thank you again, brother. Thank you so much. Now. The second thing I noticed was that the stabilizers were really good. Take a listen. Seriously, these are better stabs than what I can do. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure they just lube with some sort of grease. So honestly, Clap and applause to Keychron, because seriously, this is really good stabilizer work. And keep in mind, I'm a pretty hard gamer, and I've been typing a lot of stuff as well in regards to what I've been doing. So like, considering there isn't a facade and then actually stay, stayed lubed, I guess, for a lack of a better term, good shit. So anyway, uh, of course, the one thing that people may or may not like is this. And if I plug it in, you'll easily see we've got some RGB. <laughs> now, the keycaps are just thick enough where it only seems to light up a little bit, but it is noticeable, and I just wanted to point it out. So, moving on to the keycaps, they aren't too bad. They are really tall, and to be honest, I really like the space bar because if there's anything that I like about keycap sets and key sounds, I don't know why, but I am absolutely in love with the SA-esque spacebar. The big, like, high-pitched ting ting ting. I love that noise. I love that. I don't know why, but I just love it. It just sounds so satisfying. Rather than like a muted, like, bum, 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 bum. I've had my fair share of, you know, subsonic thumping and, of course, the very deep-sounding keyboards, like, for example, my... DOV2 has a pretty decent spacebar. And my S80 only is going to get more thumpier as by this clip right here. But sometimes you just want to switch it up, you know? And I can always appreciate a good high-pitched spacebar that is done well. I know some people hate it. I personally am a fan. So what about the keycaps? other than the fact that they are dice of BBT. Well, honestly, they aren't the best looker, but I think that's just Keychron's signature look because if you take a look at it right now, you can see that the keycaps are not necessarily the most normal looking. The majority of them are actually lowercase, at least for the modifiers. And there's even like a Cortana button here. And of course the RGB button, and this is actually print screen, but otherwise, most people probably don't like the colorway as well, more so for the consistency. For example, usually this forward slash would be black rather than gray. And then usually this entire part is just one color. Say again, my DOV2, where you can see the one thing is here and then everything here is just one color. But for this one, they decided to change it up. Honestly, for me personally, it's not a big deal. Because, because I might be ending up replacing these anyway with uh, EPBT Miami Nights. But like, I think to the average person who doesn't like drool over like some form of consistency or dream about GMK in their sleep and how their colors are supposed to be matched a certain way, I don't think it'll be a problem. But just something to point out because some people will tell me, hmm, something's off with this design and I'm not sure what it is. And then I point out this and they're like, hmm, that's exactly what I was thinking about. But anyway, so those are my praises of the board. Now we're gonna talk about the criticisms. And I do have a couple. The first thing is, well, keyboard did mention it. Although I think it's been improved, although it's still there, is the keyboard ping.
To be fair, it's not everywhere, but it's in the places that shouldn't ping, I guess. Specifically, the keys that you would press a lot, say backspace, or maybe control, or maybe one, or maybe the arrow keys. But the alphas are okay. You know, these are fine. But in terms of like the actual problem here, if you hit it hard enough, obviously you're gonna hear it. But to be fair, in regular use, it's not that bad. So I think the people that want to mod it and get rid of this variable, you know, it's pretty easy to do so. On the back, it's very clean. It's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, screws, and it just comes apart. So. I'm only reviewing the stock because I know that people like to mod their keyboard a certain way and I kind of just want to update everyone as to how I've been using this keyboard for the last two plus weeks because to be honest, it's still a very good keyboard and despite my laziness, there's nothing that bothered me to the point where I felt like I needed to take it apart and mod it because although there is ping, yeah, and maybe the keyboard sounds pretty, you know, tinny, and of course, yeah, there's RGB and like maybe some people don't like the look of the knob or maybe the keycaps look kind of weird. But again, for the value and also just because it was just so ready out of the box, I had a good time with it, honestly. I genuinely had a good time using this keyboard and I and you might hear it sometimes in when I'm playing some games. Uh, on my alt account where I post Spiral Abyss runs from Genshin and also just regular whatever, if you hear this sort of sound, that's this keyboard. I've been up to some activity lately, and whatever I post, and you hear kind of this kind of stuff, I've been using the key con Q3 without any mods. This is completely stock. So up until now, I suppose I've been blue balling everyone. How does it actually sound when typing out something on a desk mat? And yeah, let me swap over to uh, the uh, typing test mode. And let me just type up something for you guys real nice. Alright, so what are my final thoughts on the Keychron Q3? At least for the stock experience, because I do plan on modding this later with the Zeal V1s and EPVD Miami Knights. Now, I think it's actually insane value. For such ease of modding, honestly, you could probably even put multiple layers of like scotch tape or some shit for the force break mod, sorry. And then maybe tape the bottom of it with some painter's tape, whatever the fuck. And then just properly tune some stuff or even just use it stock. Either way you go about it, there's not much you can actually fault the keyboard on that you can't easily fix. Like unless if you're paraplegic or something or you have like stumps for hands, I don't think you'll have an issue modding it. And even then, if you have stumps for hands, I don't think you should be using this keyboard anyway. So, I mean, there's really not much for me to say other than just, I think I made a good choice in terms of choosing this keyboard to be interested in because honestly, I can see this thing lasting for a while. But yeah, that's kind of how I have uh, for the Q3. It's a good value board. You can use it out of the box. You can mod it, you can do whatever. The flex is good. And, 
pretty much all I have to say about it probably has been covered by someone else already. There, yet again, I need to, I need to say this, the G Pro uh, Reds will be covered in their own separate video. But until then, uh, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments because I will always answer any questions that are deserving of an answer. And there are very few instances where they're not. And I guarantee you, 99% of those comments aren't Genshin videos. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Have a good one, everyone.